Announced at Microsoft Ignite 2020, the SharePoint app bar finally started shipping to tenants across the globe in March 2021. I just got it inside my tenant this morning, had the chance to play with it, so I wanted to record this first look at the SharePoint app bar video so I can show you what happens when you get it inside the tenant, what configurations you can do, and what are some of the limitations of the SharePoint app bar. So let's get started. Okay, we are now in the lab environment and let me open up the browser over here. First, I have the documentation as we're going to go a bit through it here and there throughout the video, but let's head over to SharePoint so we can check out the app bar. I didn't do anything special in order to get the app bar this morning, it just appeared. And as you can see, I have the four different buttons. Because I have really put it back to its default configuration, the first one just brings me to my SharePoint start page. And the other three are, first of all, my sites, where I can see the frequent sites, as well as the sites that I follow. I have my news, which are all of the recommended news from the site. So far, my tenant is really not that active, so really they seem to go in order of when they were published. However, since it says recommended and not most recent, in your production environment that has more data, you might see them in a different order. And as you can see, it actually respects the organizational news site. So my VNet Solutions Home, which is an organizational news site, has the title highlighted, whereas the perspective over here, which is not an organizational news site, does not. So it really respects that as well. And the last part, which is the files. So really, all of the recent files that I have been working on, whether in SharePoint or in my OneDrive for Business. But now let's go see how we can configure the global navigation. First thing that I have to do is go to my home site. And I have really put the home site at the root. And before I go into configuration, just a quick recap on what I have on this site. First of all, at the top over here, so the first navigation that you see, this is my hub navigation. So really, those are all sites in my hub. And by the way, you can see, I can go to this team site over here, and I really have the bar that follows me in all of my modern sites. So that's pretty awesome. And under that, so my second navigation is my site navigation from the home site. Great, so now, as you have the up bar, when you go to your SharePoint settings here, you will have a new option for global navigation. Let me go in global navigation. First thing you need to do is to turn it on. So let me turn it on. As you can see, I had a logo that when I played with this morning, I can remove it for now so we can see what it looks like without the logo. I can add a title as well. So in this case, I added a title of my company. And then I have the navigation source, which can either be the home site navigation, so the one that I have here at the bottom, or my hub or global navigation that I have here. Let's start with the home site navigation. Let's click on save, and let me do a refresh. It might take a hard refresh for you to clear the cache or to navigate a bit until you see it. But as you can see now, when I click on that home icon, I now have the navigation. VNet Solutions is my title. And then I can browse down and really see, let's go to find it. So we can really compare. I can really see the same navigation that I have in my home site over here, but it will really follow me all over, even if a site is not in a hub. So for example, 
I created a team site here with a very creative name, team site, not part of the hub. And if I go into global navigation, I will really have access to it all over the place. The only exception is on classic sites. It's not available on classic sites yet, but according to the documentation, Microsoft will allow admins to make it available in classic sites as well, but there is no details on how to do that yet. So now we have really turned it on and we have used the home site navigation. Now let me customize it a bit. So let me go in global navigation and let me add a logo. According to the documentation, this should be a 20 by 20 pixels logo and I highly encourage you to work with your graphics department or design department uh, to get something that looks good. As you can see, didn't apply yet, but there we go. Of course, I, just as I said, it, it's now there. Again, I'm not an artist. I'm more of a tech person. Uh, so remember to clear your background here so you don't see the background like I do but it already looks a lot better. So this is the global navigation with an icon based on the home site nav. Remember that with the four options here, the four tabs, only the global navigation can be customizable. You cannot customize my sites, my news, my files. You cannot customize any of those. The only one you can customize is the global nav. Now, if I go back to the home here, let's go inside the global navigation and let's change it to use the hub or global navigation. So let's click on save over here. Let me refresh. Let's see if it already took effect. Didn't take effect yet. Again, because I'm in incognito and it's cached, it might take a bit of refreshes. But as you can see now, I really have the same navigation as I have on the top. Something that I found really interesting, and I don't want to get super deep in the topic because there's so many good ways to plan your navigation. But if we combine the global navigation, let me put it to the home site nav that I have here. And then for the home site specifically, let me wait for the SharePoint gear to come back up. I will go into the change the look. I will go inside of the header and I will choose the extended header. With the extended header, you do not see the home site navigation anymore. So I really only have my hub site navigation over here. And of course, you can add sublinks, you can add things like that. So I'll just add a sublink here as an example. Okay, and let's make it a sublink. So you can really use the full uh, mega menu in the hub site. And in the global navigation, I can have something else. So if you really want to have the global nav something that is unique, this could be a way for you to have that global navigation unique and hide it when you're in the home site so people do not see the same thing twice. Of course, if you want to edit it after, uh, you cannot simply edit it from here. You just have to change the look and then go back into seeing it. And after that, let me go here to uh, standard, for example, save. If I want to edit it, I can edit it here. And something else that's really cool is that you can enable audience targeting. And if we look at the documentation, we see that audience targeting can be applied to menu links in the global navigation. So you can really customize it for your organization. Now that we have really seen a bit of the highlights of what it is, Let's cover some important parts of the documentation. So really, we make sure we cover everything. Uh, first of all, the SharePoint app bar experience. We have seen the four different tabs, global navigation, sites, news and files. And global navigation is the only app bar tab that can be customized. When the global navigation is disabled, so that's how it was initially in our video when we started, the home icon links to the SharePoint start page. You cannot disable specific tabs. 
and you cannot disable it on specific sites. It's really there to follow you across your digital workplace. However, and it's here at the bottom. The SharePoint app bar can be temporarily disabled between today and when it comes available to all customers in order to give you time for change management or any customizations that you might have on this left page here that might be affected. And this can only be done with PowerShell and it's really important is that you cannot disable it forever. You really have a hard date of October 31st, 2021. So that's at least for now, the latest until you can disable that SharePoint app bar. Microsoft did offer us some end user guidance and you have a link here, which I'll also make sure to put in the description of the video, but you do have a link for end user guidance if you want to put this in your documentation, in your user training to explain it to users. And we also have documentation a bit in what I showed you on how to configure it. Something really important that in order to customize the global navigation, you need to have a home site. So you need to have a home site designated in your tenant this is a PowerShell only operation. So you need to work with your SharePoint admin for that. And you need to have site owner permissions or higher meaning site collection administrator to the home site in order to enable the global navigation. And then users need read access or higher to the home site to view the global navigation links. This is really important so that your users have read access at least on your home site, because if not, what will happen is that they will open that global nav and they will have an access denied. And I've seen this in some other tenants that I'm a member of working on specific projects where I've got the access denied. I'm sure Microsoft might make the experience better in the future with a nicer message, but make sure that all of your users have at least read access on that home site. And also, even if so far it has been pretty good to me, implementing the global navigation may take up to 24 hours for the changes to take effect for users. As I played with it today, it has been super fast, maybe under one minute, but the warning is there. If you do a change and you do not see it yet, it might take some time. So don't open a support ticket if it hasn't been 24 hours. We then have a bit of get started content here. Uh, the logo size is 20 by 20 pixels. I was right. And PNG file type, and transparent background recommended. This is what I did not do in my demo because I didn't have one quickly standing by, but I'll make it look better later. And then we have some guidance here on where the logo goes, where the title goes. And then we also have the information about the navigation source, if it's the home site or hub site. And if we scroll lower, we also have some information about the extended header, which we have talked about earlier. And we have also for home sites that are not a hub site. What is really interesting for home sites that are not a hub is that what you can do is you can select hub or global navigation. So if we go back here and I won't be able to show it to you because my home site is a hub. But once you go and select this option, if your home site is not a hub, you can actually have edit global navigation. And here you can create a global navigation. So really you can have a dedicated global nav that's not from the site, that's not from the hub. You can have its own thing. And if you decide to make your home site a hub in the future, the new hub site navigation will inherit the current navigational nodes for the global nav, and then you can edit it as a normal hub. And then you also have different options here on how to make it look and a lot more documentation. So it's really 
good that Microsoft added a bunch of content in here for setting this up and because it's a feature that will really be visible across your organization. I mean, there is no way that somebody will be able to go to SharePoint without seeing that. It's really important that you plan your change management and that you go turn on the global navigation as soon as possible, add a beautiful custom logo in there and really leverage this feature for your users. This is it for this quick look video at the SharePoint app bar in SharePoint Online. This is something that has just been released to my tenant, which is in targeted release. And I'm looking forward to not only learning more about it myself, showing it to my customers, but also creating more content on how to get the most out of it. This is it for this video. I hope that you have enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. This way you get to see all of my latest videos. And if you have a question, put it in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as possible.